What's up guys, quick update on Bitcoin. It's been a while since we made a video. Um, right now we're pretty much just getting sandwiched between six and eight, six one eights guys, uh, as you can see right here. Um, I think the medium term we have kind of a, probably a correction coming um, around this FOMC meeting. It's probably gonna do just something like this guys and then go up, that's kind of what I'm leaning on right now. Um, so that's this is on the weekly. Uh, still kind of the play right now, you know, I've been showing this in the past what I think is most likely to happen And I still think this is kind of what's going on That it's very very like 70 to 90 percent chance we go up and uh, very unlikely we go down from here from at least this point I, I do think this point right here was still your bottom point and I do think we're going up. That's still kind of what I think so and we were kind of, you know, this right here is most likely an accumulation pattern that's happening on the weekly, guys. We're respecting this uh, 40 bullet, uh, 40 area on the R side. That's kind of like a bullish uh, bull market support area. So that's it on the weekly. You know, we already went through all this stuff. This is just price action analysis instead of looking at what Bitcoin's done in the past, which I think a lot of people already do. So it's important to just look at price action analysis, I think. And uh yeah, that just looks like an accumulation pattern, guys, which is going to play out. You know, the market's going to try to fake you out right now. We probably do have, like, one more dip, guys, before we go up. That's kind of what we think. Uh, I do think there's probably going to be one more shakeout at this point. Now, if you start looking at this, this pattern on, like, the daily, for example, right? You know, this is kind of putting up this, like, kind of like a triangle like this, right? And this is going to fake out a lot of analysts, I think. They're like, well, triangles are, uh, you know, continuation patterns. And, you know, if you look at like what's happened here, where we've been in a downtrend and now we have a triangle. So that's bearish, right? Uh, I think this is just going to fake out a lot of people. Uh, I, th I think it's just going to go probably down one more time than go up, guys. That's really what I think is going to happen right now. Oops. So if you go here. You know, we're probably going to tag the golden area one more time. If you look at where it's stacked. You know, that's like stacked golden areas. I think this one is a little too high. Yeah, even that one could be a, yeah, so that, you know, I would say this is the area that you would really want to look out for. Uh, is this like 55, 56K area that we might back test right now. Um, that's still kind of what I think. So now if you look at, you know, uh, important moving averages that I have drawn up here, we're kind of just slicing between this thing, right? But you could see that even scripts are picking up this uh, triangle like this um i think the the triangles are a little tricky especially when you have a big wick like this i think that's when it starts you know looking like a kind of like a fake out so it's kind of what i think right now guys but if you do look at the daily we are definitely at the top of the range and there's definitely bearish divergence there you know it, it looks like the really that there is going to be one one last drop right like that and you know this could honestly be you know i was telling my discord this could honestly just be like a 335 um, real quick, right? It would just be like a 335 and then we go up or this could be an expanded flat and it's just very volatile because of the FOMC meeting. Now it's interesting if this is, uh, we could do, probably do it on here. If this is like an expanded flat that we're looking for, um, what lines up here, right? If you do these extensions like this, right? The You know, the hotspot for a, for a expanded flat is between the one is it basically the one to one and the one two seven but a lot of times it could be anywhere between the one two seven one to one and the one six one eight which kind of lines up with that six one eight area right there so i would keep an eye on this level right here which is 56k you know if if, if we do get really volatile around this fomc meeting it's kind of what i said in my chat i think while we we're at like 60.5 and now we're just having this big red candle for the daily right but you know, if you look at just the way this is playing out, though, like if you look good, if you look at the high to low, uh, we pretty much tag the one, two, three, six on the dot, which automatically screams a three, three, five, especially when this looks like an impulse like that, a completed impulse. And you have your uh, this thing right here was a little like, uh, you know, this was kind of. When this happened right here, I was kind of thinking that this is most likely a finished impulse because there was overlap right there uh, between this this point and this point, right? So yeah, I kind of just think this is a 335 right now, guys, or an expanded flat, and then we might go up. Now, what, what else you could do here is just drop the time extension between that point to see where the one-to-one -one is. So, you know, I would say that this thing 
we could do something like that possibly i think it's a possibility guys or you could just get crazy volatile right so this is just something we want to keep an eye on and you could drop these trend lines yourself right but it's probably going to just respect the golden zone right there that's exactly where the trend is at as well from that point right there and then you also have stack 618s right here so that's an area i would definitely keep an eye on right now that we might respect guys before we go up um so just keep an eye on that area and yeah even on the eight hour you could see how this is pretty topped out right this little divergence on the medium time frames right there so we're just looking for this to get back down to like this 20 30 rsi level on the medium time frames guys which you know if you look at how long the length of the, how long that's probably going to take right so you know from one swing to you know one swing high or whatever yeah it's about a week so we might get a week worth of uh, a bearishness guys so just be ready for like uh for some crazy volatility you're probably gonna see some shake out here but on the macro time frames like if you look at you know like what we're seeing right here like weekly for example or even any of these higher time frames you could see that these all look in my opinion pretty bullish this is just price action analysis we're retesting a lot of support right so um yeah that's just that now if you go on the one hour you know on the one hour what i'm doing now is uh or the one hour low time frames we like to call either one three i usually just do one hour or three hour um you know i think that this is just a like i said a three three five it's kind of what we're gearing up for now we did just back test this ffg right here already we picked up the ffg which these get picked up like 90 to 100 percent 90 to 99 percent of the time right if you look at the last 2000 4000 data points right so you know this i think was a one two three five completed like i said because this overlapped with this point right so and and this retraced to the 618 area so that's why i was thinking that you know now that because that's unlikely probability wise for this to be like a one two three four right and then another leg up for for a more extended impulse you know and this looks a little wonky for that for you know for this this portion right here you know the structure of this i don't really like doing it on the hourly but this is kind of what makes sense to me and also on the elliott wave oscillator we got a, a new high pivot right here which means that either this is a wave three which really doesn't look right or make any sense and it looks like you know honestly that that was uh that was your wave three because that was your high pivot and then you had the divergence point right there right so that looks like a complete impulse and then we cross down and this this just looks like a an a b c like that and now we're probably going to be looking for like something like that where we get a lower low i mean that's kind of what i'm thinking guys on the on the hourly right so that you know your ffg you know you still have a lot of liquidity above but now we have some below as well so I would just pay attention to these golden zones, guys. That's the area where, like, around the volatility where the market likes to move. But I do want to show you guys a different angle. Now, if you go look at the Russell uh, 2000, which we are keeping an eye on because this, once this thing, this is kind of hand in hand with small caps. It goes hand in hand with, like, Dogecoin and stuff, right? Once we break the all-time high, like what's happened in previous points here after we backtest support, like this area right here and like this area right here, that's when your Dogecoin goes straight up and other meme coins, right? So that's kind of what happened, right? This is what we've been saying. It back tested support right here. And now look, we got another, uh, we got another green candle right here, right? So, you know, this is starting to look also like a triangle. So you have signs that this thing is gearing up to go up and that should absolutely correlate with everything else that we're looking at it should line up with the uh, alt season right underway and bitcoin going to new highs so let's just switch gears real quick and look at metrics and then i want to look at uh bitcoin dominance i think is what i have lined up for today yeah there's just tells right now that we are getting to the top portion of the range here you know even if you look at our side top of the top of the trend line right there right but this does look like a downwards wedge pattern right which is going to show up on even higher time frames like that uh, you know, MACD is, you know, it's kind of just in the middle. But if you look at the oscillators in the back, you could see that as well at the top trend line. Uh, you know, the volatility and volume is still low. Um, yeah, here's another thing. The, you know, the uh, the funding has gone back up to the top of the range. As well as uh, the divergence in the open interest, which has kind of gone up to the, the, new, the new high range, right? So there's tells like this. Uh, and uh, the range is the support, the, the, the most important support resistance levels is definitely getting squeezed here, guys. 
like that. So this might just bounce around between like 62, 63K and like, you know, 58K, right? Or like 56K. I would say those are the two ranges that we might just go up and down with this volatility, guys. So if you're a short-term trader, I would pay attention to those two points. But long-term, I think this just resolutes with, with us going up. I literally think that's what's going to happen. Um, if you look at the you know the past uh high time frame closes you know that's a lot of bids that's accumulation you look at dogecoin you know it's going to play out Seoul is the same a lot of accumulation going on here guys should play out um and then if we look at etf net flows it looks like we're just back testing that top trend line you know that's interesting we don't want it to fall back in then it starts looking weird but a back test and then it goes higher is fine but you know it, this is a little you know, we want to pay more attention to like confirmation signals when this is at bottom of trend, etc. Like this and top of trend. The way it's going right now, yeah, it is back testing that trend line, but it looks like it might be breaking back down into it. So it's kind of like a little tricky thing right here. Just something to keep an eye on. So that's that. So if you look at another angle on the heat, uh, long with surely liquidity heat map, you can see still most of it is up above. You know, let's go look at a little lower time frame just to see. I usually like looking at this at the three and the six month because I just think it's easier swing trading. Um, nah, yeah, I don't know. So let that load. Um, even if you look at this right here, it looks a little even right now, actually. We might just bounce around. Like, I, you know, I was, you know, I was saying, like, I, I still think there's a gap till 65K, but it might play out a little later. You know what I mean? This looks about even on these two ends. It's not like one end is, like, highly... Uh, more potent than the other end you know just what i see if you look at the seven day on this thing might as well um yeah it looks like you know we might go down to like 56k guys that's uh that's still where that 618 is before we go back up right something like that or we might go up to 63k first but i, I think we're going to probably have a shakeout before we go up guys based on other stuff that we're also looking at right so this would be on the one month the one month is a little interesting you know the one month still looks like a little too zoomed out actually let's let this yeah i think the the like the one week is pretty good um just because it goes down to like 50 50k right there right so yeah we went up we picked up that liquidity now we're gonna go down to pick up this liquidity i think you know it's it's kind of likely that we do go down like i said the 56k level guys we might go one more time before we go up right so that's what we think about that now if you look at my crosses script uh, you know to me this still looks like an accumulation range you know, even if we do go up to this bottom trend, like right here, that's still marking this as accumulation, right? So this could be a fake out triangle, guys, and before we go up, right? It's kind of what we think. And the last thing I want to look at, guys, is Bitcoin dominance. Um, one thing, you know, I saw this on some other guy's video, but if you put up the, the halving dates, right, which I have the orange vertical line at these points, usually the Bitcoin dominance start, starts falling 243 days after the halving right? It happened on this cycle and then it happened on this cycle, right? Like the black line, right? So the next, the, the halving was here in April, 2024. Then it looks like Bitcoin dominance should tank in December, which is crazy because I didn't even know about this thing. And that lines up with the, literally everything else that we're looking at where Bitcoin tops in December or around there. And then alt season starts and is basically December to December to February or March, right? That's kind of what we think. Uh, even if you look at the pattern, which for some reason you can do the Elliott wave count better on the RSI than you can on the Bitcoin dominance. Maybe because this thing is stuck in a range. Like you can't do this. You, you know, you can. I'm just saying you, you can do this with Bitcoin dominance. It's pretty evident. Like if you count these waves, one, two, three, four, five, this is on the one month, Right, that's a clear impulse, and you had an ABC, and then you have a one, two, three, four triangle fourth, and this is going up for the last fifth leg, right? And then this thing should dump. Uh, I mean, it's getting close now. That the key here, obviously, then is to just count this move up, right? Which should just be an impulse, right? And try to pinpoint when it's going to happen. And we did that. You know, I look, look at it at three week and the two week. So even here, it kind of looks like it's gearing up for this last leg up. But if you go look at it on the two week. Or like the let's look at the one week. The two week I think shows it pretty good, right? Like, like a you know one, two, three, four, five. It's literally just going up for this last leg up, I think, guys. Right now, if you go zoom out, right, and you look at this thing, I already put up the six one eight here, which is at sixty percent. 
that also lines up with that trend line still, right? So it, based on how you draw it like that, it's it's around that area. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect. But the 618 also lines up with this cluster of resistance at 60%, right? <clears throat> Which if you zoom out, there's also a order blocks right there. So, you know, it looks like we're just going to tag this 60% area. I think, you know, October, November, this thing is going to have one finale up or whatever. Like I said, I don't really care about pinpointing things, guys. I just need to get close, right? That's it. And then you just wait. Or so anyways, but this looks like a one, two, three, four, five, like that, guys. And this is is gearing up for it looks like a last little uh push up, which could be uh, you know it looks about like a month and a half this thing has run up, right? So it looks like November, December is when all uh, when uh your Bitcoin dominance is gonna tank. So that, that's the last thing I wanted to look at, guys. Um well, you know, in the next video. I think what else I'm gonna do, guys, is start um doing all coin analysis uh nights maybe but right now the sentiment is so bearish you're like no one's looking at crypto so it's just kind of like you know we're waiting for like retail kind of to get back right now it's just like an accumulation rate like thing going on guys um but yeah this is kind of what we think right here let's wait and see if we see this abc is kind of what is happening right now guys um yeah, uh, come say hi on Discord. I post uh, daily thoughts uh, on there. Um, and I think we're going to try to do altcoin, a quick five-minute, like six-minute altcoin video at nights or later on in the day, um, every night. Uh, well, at least especially when it gets, um, when crypto picks up. Um, and that would just be like a random altcoin or something, high cap altcoin. And then we'll do like Bitcoin analysis uh, mornings or like every 24, 48 hours. Right now it's every like two, three days because sentiment's bad and there's just not many viewers and stuff. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching.